Last week, Shakedown asked you, which was Porsche's first turbo race car? The 917-10, developed for the 72 Can-Am, after Le Mans outlawed the 5-liter 12 of the 917K and long hex. Porsche's first plan was to go all 16-cylinder, like Professor P did with his 1930s auto unions. But they finally settled on a turbo future, and the rest is history. Such is the power of a first car. Now, I'm short, not stupid. I ended the last shakedown that way for a reason, because I knew Fastlane Daily was partnering with BBC America's Top Gear to pump up the start of their all-new season this Monday, February 7th, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. So let's make this a special shakedown. The entire show pitching my first car stories. I go all Billy Mays on behalf of James May. But I'll make this work as smoothly as Jezza and the Hamster power sliding their dream cars around the Top Gear test track. Every story in this week's shakedown will be a my first car tale. The racing news has more than enough of those. Like all the F1 debuts that Derek highlighted on Tuesday. Thanks to Kerr's and DCS drag control system, it's the adjustable rear wing, being added to the driver control workload already consumed managing settings for the chassis, gearbox, differential. Oh, and driving and racing these mobile tech fests, a 2011 GP car may be the first car impossible to operate without voice activation like my Ford Touch. There are just too many damn buttons now. I wonder what would happen if you just screamed into the mic. Before I get too nuts here, let's get to Top Gear. The all-new season starts Monday, February 7th, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. The BBC America lads and lasses are looking for stories about your first car. You can share them on Twitter with the hashtag MyFirstCar or post your videos on YouTube with the tag MyFirstCar. Plus, you can go to MyFirstCarStories.com and compete to win a trip for two to London to see a Top Gear Live event. The new season starts this Monday, but you have until March 4 to enter. And listen to this coolness. BBC America will pick their favorite My First Car Stories on air during this new season of Top Gear. For today, here are my two picks. We have Corey Stokes, who writes his first car is a 97 Grand Am I crashed into a tree trunk drifting. Great, a racing story. Where were you drifting to hit a tree? Number two, from Motor Mail App. My first car was the ultimate sleeper, a GMC Cyclone. It was crazy fast. Like the ad said, zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds in the rain. You know, you get to do that zero to 60 blast off in the rain just once then you probably hit a tree like Drifter Boy. Back to the script. Toyota's bringing their first car back to Le Mans since the all-fast but not all-conquering 1998-99 GT1 TSO20. Rebellion Racing is plugging this Toyota engine into its Lola chassis, 3.4 liter, normally aspirated, and derived from Toyota's Formula Nippon motor. Okay, but not as cool as this Toyota 7 coupe that was prepped for but never raced Le Mans in the late 60s. And you know what? And Jezza may say Toyotas are unappealingly Priusly boring, but I bet he could find love for that seven. Let's stay with Toyota a bit more because in F1, they earn more my first status with these tidbits. Number one, Ferrari and Williams are the first outsiders to use Toyota's wind tunnel to shape their 2011 cars. Number two, rumors say no less than six teams are buying services from the Toyota Tech Center left over from T's F1 fail. And three, to me, the Mercedes nose looks a lot like the 2010 Toyota F1 car that was never raced. So in 2011, thanks to its customers, Toyota may finally claim my first winning car status. The real win? They figured out how to make money racing F1. How about a look at Ferrari's first car in GT3, their 458, announced at the Grand M Daytona 24. And Peugeot's first car for the 2011 Le Mans. It debuted yesterday. We recorded this on Wednesday. So just a picture for now. Specs and details in future FLD or shakedown shows. On to my first C6 Corvette drift car. Blue 808 is the builder for driver Luke Longberger, with a lot of parts from Lou Gelati's World Challenge and ALMS road racing experience. You know, I think this is the first C6 drift car. There is a C5, but with that paintwork, no American Corvette fan or GM corporate suit would ever own up to it. Back to F1 for my first car tech details. Here's a first look from Sauber on how the DCS wing works. Cool. Next, Black Lotus can claim first car with its exhaust exit at the front of the side pod. Hot air under the car could create more pressure. 
and thunderclouds when hitting the cold air. Although the new rules are trying to prevent them, Red Bull is the only team so far to attempt a shark fin. In 2011, the fin can't attach to the wing. Red Bull says the air won't feel the difference. Ferrari is the first car to adopt Iron Man technology. It appears that Tony Stark is now racing the F-150. Nice face here, Fernando. See, the Iron Man suit wasn't painted hot rod red, it was Marinello Rosso all along. And finally, a first car racing TV series since Speed Racer that may not suck. Director brothers Ridley and Tony Scott are planning shows set in the world of 1950s and 1960s sports car racing. The Ridleys did Blade Runner and Alien, but also Top Gun, and wait for it, Days of Thunder. OMFG is all I can say. You know, let's leave cars on TV to the pros, like the three lads from BBC's Top Gear. The other Lotus, the Green Lotus, sports a blade roll bar and split airbox like last year's Mercedes. Except the 2011 rules require the blade to be fatter, so the aero advantage may be gone. Everyone else copied the Red Bull ideas, like the rear pull rod suspension. Who'd have thought the mimicking the winner would be the way to go? Mm -hmm.